Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and we are live here on our Friday evening broadcast. Welcome to everybody that's already in the room. It's like wonderful to see. So hi to Jamie, to Isabel, to Ali, and, um, <laughs> and to me. <laughs> We're going to be doing some fun stuff today. Um, I'm doing some stuff about what questions to ask yourself if you're getting a bit stuck or if you're overwhelmed or any of those things. And uh, hopefully we will find somebody or some people to be uh, a guinea pig on this one. And if not, I will put myself up as my own guinea pig uh, because it's much easier when you see something happening rather than just talk about it. So this is what we're going to be doing. For those of you who are new to the broadcast, uh, if you're watching on the replay, please notice that in the notes below, hi there, Kerry, in the notes below, it's going to say from zero, zero to such and such in time, news, views, and updates. And then from another time on to the end will be the topic. And today, the topic is, as we said, um, questions to ask yourself. Uh, I'm trying to help people get unstuck. I've got quite a few of the viewers who are a little bit stuck this week. And so I thought I would try and do this in the hope that it will help some of them get uh, you know, out of some of the stuck places that they're in. So um, for those of you who may be watching but not part of the chat, that is awesome. We really welcome anybody to be a ghoster. That's wonderful. In fact, we know from our experience that we've had all sorts of people who have done that and got a great deal of benefit. So that is absolutely not a problem at all, and we welcome it. If you do come into the chat, you will probably find me asking whether it's okay to say certain things if I think you might not want it to be public. That's just until I get to know you a lot better. Uh, most of the hi Jody, most of the people who are in the room as regulars know if you don't want me to talk about it, please don't put it up or put a note on there that says don't discuss it out loud. I do try and get the chat down as soon as possible after the broadcast. Sometimes it does take a little bit longer than others, but um, normally it gets disconnected almost within five or ten minutes. Occasionally I clean forget. I get distracted, but uh, and then luckily one of the viewers will say you forgot to disconnect the chat, so, which goes to show I'm a human being and not perfect. First of all, happy birthday to Nana. I am um, hope she's had a wonderful day. For those of you who don't know, it's her birthday today. For those of you who know Pat, um, just to let you know, she was in on the lunchtime broadcast and she's home and a um, little sore, but uh, she actually... Um, crashed during the operation. They they <laughs> had to work out whether she wanted to live or not. Um, hi, Marie. And so, you know, we're really pleased that she made it through. And the fact that she crashed probably means that her rib cage is pretty sore. But um, it is, you know, one of those things that we're very grateful she's still there to tell the story and make us laugh with it. For those of you who know Christy, um, Christy, congratulations to her because she uh, managed to get herself uh, up a grade at the studying that she's doing. Jody's had some health issues this week and you know has been a bit down with it. So anybody that can support her would appreciate that because she does so much to support everybody else. Hi, Nana. Happy birthday. Um, Lauren had a big disappointment this week. She had planned to go for a special trip. And um, she tried to get some financing to be able to do it, and it, it didn't come through. So, But she was really great. She um, just took it in her stride and said, you know, that's it. Um, Nana, I have a great saying in my kitchen which says, if you haven't grown up by 60, you don't have to. And I don't know about you, but that was the greatest 60th birthday present I got. I loved it. Um, ah, so Marie is Christy. Oh, gosh, it gets very complicated for me. All right. All right. So there's a Christy. You're the one that's doing the grades, right? Not my other Christy that's in... San Fernando, not San Fernando, in Sacramento area. Okay, so thank you for, you may have to keep reminding us of that. No, no problem at all, sweetie. Um, no problem at all. Pat, I wanted to ask you, are your ribs sore from um, <laughs> crashing these 
this life. Um, I just wondered whether you know the the resuscitation was painful on your ribs. And you know, <laughs> I, I'm so glad that you decided to join us. Oh yes, that's what I thought. You know, I tried. You know, and I've heard of people's ribs actually getting broken by being resuscitated. So I'm glad that that, that you're any sore. I can imagine your bruise is very pretty, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, like you weren't pretty enough. Now you're really pretty with with the bruises. Okay, um, for those of you who don't know, I was discussing at lunchtime today that I have let go of Cedar Cottage, and that's all part of my story for the week. And Terry is suffering from a little bit of overwhelm, and so anybody who's part of her support team, she could do with a little bit of help as well. And last but not least, I wanted to show um, the, how many people in the room, if any, other than Jody, uh, have a sleep apnea machine. Yes, see the cottage is the fifth wheel I was so set on going to. Thank you, Marie. I appreciate it. Okay, Pat, how often do you wash yours out? I, I want to show you what I found and I've been working with. Um, you've got two choices if you have a sleep apnea machine and that's one of these masks that goes over your face. Uh, and what you're meant to do is at least every couple of days you're meant to wash everything out, you know, and clean it up and oh, it's absolute drips everywhere and messy. And I kept saying there has to be a better way. The better way costs about 300 bucks. You've probably seen that, Pat. Pat, I found an even better way. Don't know if you can see my sleep apnea equipment, and you can probably see that blue light flashing in there. How would you like to be able to clean all the bugs and everything without any water and just throw it into a shoebox for three hours? Oh, hi, Lizzie. So you have this one? I want to tell you something. This is the greatest thing. So, Jody, that's literally, I haven't uh, recharged it yet. This is the first time, I think the third time I've used it. Um, and all you get is that ion smell. Do you know what I mean by that? Anyway, I want to tell you, I definitely don't think this was a waste of money. Yeah, and you literally, when you open it up, you get that, you know, that ion smell. I don't know how to describe that, but it's sort of like a dry smell. And that's what it is. And then it's going to start flashing red pretty soon, I'm sure, um, which means time to um, recharge it. But So you don't even have to charge it up every day. You know, and literally all I do is I throw it in here. I have a full nasal, I have the nasal mask, not the, not the pillows. I have the one that goes over my nose. Hang on, hang on you guys. <laughs> and there are two exits <laughs> and then you put on your mask. <laughs> so my mask is one of those. I'm not going to put it over my headphones. Got it? So it's not the not the pillows that go inside your nose. It is actually the full cover of your nose. I found those pillows made my uh, nose hurt a lot. So I actually upgraded. I probably will, when this one needs replacing, I think I will get um, the full mask one. Anyway, so I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew there is such a thing and you don't have to spend, it does the same thing as the, uh, it does the same thing as the 300 buck machine, but <laughs> you just buy your own box to put it in. 
So I think it's wonderful. I'm just so happy with it. So Jody has the ultra glamorous full face mask. Yeah, I think I'm going to go that route as well. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, that that is a huge saving of money. And with, where did I get it? Uh, I found it on eBay. And I'd have to now go back and refind it. I think I sent the link to Jody. And with Jody being the smart person she is, she can probably find that link for me. But I literally, Pat, I bought it um, for, I think, 62 bucks, including shipping. I think. <laughs> well, we're going to tell you, Pat, as soon as Jody's found it for you. But Jody, you don't have to spend the time finding it right now, if you like. We can send it on to Pat. I can't remember what it's called. That's what I'm trying to find the link. And I know jody has got the link because I sent it to her. And she's better at finding things than I am. So we will find it and send it on to you. But if you know anybody that is in, you know, wears a CPAC mask, it's a really great thing. All right. What I wanted to do today is, um, first of all, ask Nana, did she have a wonderful day? I'm hoping that she did. Um, Yeah, and what I wanted to do is to see if any of you are stuck um, this week on anything, because what I wanted to do is ask a whole stack of questions and see if we can unstick ourselves. Uh, I, you know, I was absolutely amazed when I was talking to Lauren earlier this week that when she found out she couldn't get the money to go on the trip she wanted to go on, she immediately said, God must have a better plan. When I went to go and sign the deal, or I was about to go and sign the deal for the fifth wheel, I got a really loud message in my head, which was, do not sign this deal. And I had to check with myself whether this was some sort of fear or whether this was some sort of logic. And it was really interesting because I decided to listen to the voice in my head because I found out that the voice in my head normally has pretty good advice for me. So I wanted to ask a whole series of questions so that some of you could ask yourself, hopefully, a couple of questions as well from this and hopefully get some. Yes, I know she is. We've said hello to her, um, Nana. We said hello to Ali at the get-go. So, <laughs> um, yes, exactly, Pat, right? You figure um, that, that you weren't allowed to go when you crash because there is a new plan for you, right? There's more that you have to do. Nana, I don't have a plan right now, which is part of why I'm doing tonight's broadcast, so you can guys can see that. Um, yes, all right, so Marie is stuck on worrying about her test anxiety. It's stressing her out to the extreme. I've got two cold sores, and that's so pretty, isn't it, Marie? I mean, cold sores are so pretty, aren't they? So here, here is the thing. Do you have zinc for the cold sores? That's a good place to start. And if anybody's got an old wives' tale on how to fix cold sores in a hurry, let's hear them for her. Um, the anxiety. Let me ask you a really straight question. What is your, stress is an awful thing. We know that, Lizzie, and that's why I want to do this. Are you afraid of failing? You know, that's, that's I'm going to ask the questions if you would like me to, Marie. So just give me permission to ask the questions. Because, you know, we keep saying this Jerry Jampolsky thing, there are only two real things in life, and, and one is love and one is fear. So if you're suffering from anxiety, do you understand you are in fear in some way? Yeah, it does make you feel so dang beautiful, those cold sores. Yeah, I quite agree. And when it gets scabby, so pretty. Yeah. So the, the question that I have is, what is the fear, Marie? Is your fear of failing? Is it your fear of not doing well enough? What is what is the fear that's causing the anxiety? Lizzie, I know 
what of some of what's going on for you. Um, so again, think to yourself, you know, what is the fear here? Not am I anxious? We all know you are. You've never had a cold sore. You're very lucky, Nana. You probably, I'm trying to remember, is it people that have had measles that get cold sores or people that haven't had measles that get cold sores? <laughs> you're still a mess. Yeah, well, we're all still a mess, Lizzie. You're not special. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we We wouldn't all enjoy each other if we weren't all still a mess. And that's why we're here, to help ourselves get out of this. Now for new reasons. Okay, if you want to share them, do. But if you don't, that's also fine. So, Marie, you're so scared. I need to pass this to get into the teacher education program. Okay, so you need to pass it by this much. Uh, by the way, how, are you, how do you think you're doing this semester? Okay, and so, Marie, I'm presuming it's okay for me to read this out loud. Please just confirm that. Okay, I'm going to read this one. Um, what Marie is saying is that she has a fear of not passing the math part with a high enough score to meet the composite number needed to get into the program. Total understandable fear. How... How do you think you're doing? Are you sort of close to getting that level or are you a long way away from getting to that level? In other words, is, is it a rational fear based on your experience or is it just, oh my gosh, if I don't get this, Okay, so Marie's saying that it's okay, so let's do this. She's saying it's actually not included with her grades. Which it's a whole separate test. Okay, so you have no idea. So you have no idea how you rate on that test. Have you done some? Can you can you do some of those tests online? Normally they have practice tests. The reason I'm saying this, Marie, is you're either good enough to pass or you're not. Agreed. And you are pretty close to taking that test, as far as I remember. Now, there's been a time in my life where I did a test that I really wanted to pass, and I failed it by this much. It took me another six months to pass it by that much. So, Marie, this is not a judgment of how smart you are. Do you understand that? And I'm pretty sure that if you do not pass it, that you can redo this after you've got some help on, on those things. So, you know, the thing that happens to us is we are convinced that this is, you know, do or die sort of thing. And I really need you to know that it isn't. I can tell you there are more people I know that have failed tests. You take it on the fifth. All right, so you're really, really close. And how about you just you know, just take a breath and go, I'm going to do the best I can, right? I'm going to do the best I can. I'm either going to pass it or I'm not. And if I don't pass it, it doesn't mean I'm a loser, doesn't mean that I'm a failure. It means I need to do a bit more work on my math. Makes sense, honey. It's not the end of the of the road. It is a case of it's a test is purely a benchmark. It's a it's a framework to find out how you're doing. And so for I know it's scary and I know that it's really important. Yes, you'll be able to redo the math part. It'll just you have to pay another 90 bucks. Now I know that's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I understand that's a lot of money. So you can redo that on its own if necessary. And I definitely think you just need to go and do it. I can remember somebody once telling me, Marie, <laughs> um, that they were putting me into an exam just for the practice. <laughs> you know what I mean? For the experience. And I remember a teacher telling me that. Salah, I'm putting you in for this, you know, high level of, of 
test because um, I, I, we want to see how you do, you know, for the experience. And then we'll know how to bring you up to speed. I thought that was so... <laughs> <laughs> so motivating. How about you guys? Now we're putting you in because we expect you to fail. We want to see by how much. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing was I didn't fail. Yay. Um, I passed and I passed well. <laughs> so it goes to show that what did the teachers know? The teachers had their judgment of my ability. And apparently the people who were marking the paper had a totally different judgment of my ability. So, you know, sometimes it that does help. So do you understand what I'm saying, Marie, that um, it, it's we're very hard on ourselves. So the main thing is, Marie, here's some questions for you. Is it going to make your test score any better by worrying yourself sick about it? That's the question I have for you. If you consider to, if you continue to stress out about it, are you going to improve your chances or lessen them? That's what I want you to think about. Whereas if you say, hey, I've done as much as I can, and I'm going to just do this and find out how well I do, okay? And if I have to retake it, I'll somehow rather save up the extra 90 bucks, get some help first, you know, save up the 90 bucks and retake it. And as I said, you know, to me, I took a really important exam to me and I failed it by this much the first time and passed it by this much the second time. So, you know, was I that much more intelligent? Not really. You know, it was just a couple of points here and there and I got through. It will not make it better to stress. You will just make yourself more worked up. Can you see that in reality? So everything you can, um, you know, listen to all the other questions we're going to be asking during this broadcast, Marie, and see what you can come up with. Hi, Ali. Yes, that's interesting. Ali's saying that's the mindset she tried to have earlier today at her job interview. Yeah, they're either gonna like they're either gonna like you or they're not, Ali. This is the thing I know from interviewing people. Quite often, I ha have actually employed somebody who didn't interview very well. But the thing was, I really liked them as a person. I could just tell that their nerves were getting the better of them, and um, you know, I didn't hold that against them. Some people now, obviously, if I, if I um, was interviewing them for a sales job or something, then I'd need them to be able to control their their um, stress levels a bit better. Yeah, and so this is the whole thing. They're either going to like you or you're not. It's not all about what's written on a piece of paper. I, from my experience, you wouldn't have the interview if they didn't think you were possible to be employed. Makes sense, Ali. Um, it was for a manager position, right? So you had to keep your cool. Good. Exactly. Or it would be better to keep your cool because that's the sort of person they're looking for as a management position. It's amazing at your young age that you are interviewing for management positions. That's awesome. But, you know, you've always been a little older for your years, in my view, right? Your mind's always been a little ahead of your age group which must have been challenging for you at times. So question I have for you all. Are you afraid to make a mistake? It's just my opinion, Ali. <laughs> I'd employ you. <laughs> so how many of you, are you afraid to make a mistake? Let's get some feedback on that. And the reason I'm asking that is because, okay, so Lizzie says, sometimes depending on the situation, Kerry's saying, not really. Um, I am, yep, and Marie's saying she's afraid to make many mistakes. Jody's saying sometimes. Okay, so let's find out what sort of mistakes do you fear making? Are they the ones that embarrass you? 
or are they the ones that are, you know, to find out whether you're smart or not, what sort of mistakes are the ones that, that you're afraid of? Yes, um, Nana's saying that mistakes are learning steps. Um, and some, in some bit times, you can't afford to make a mistake at all. I'm thinking about people like airline pilots and stuff. You know, they can't go back and, and redo things, right? It's like you make a mistake up there, buddy. You know, you just killed a whole plane full of people. So, you know, there are some professions where making a mistake is, is, is not possible. But for most of us, yes, Kerry's saying she's, she, she doesn't like mistakes that cause her to embarrass herself. Ali's saying her fear is that her mistakes will affect other people negatively. It is possible. Lizzie's always worried about saying the wrong thing. Jody is worried about mistakes with her health care. I would like to say that Lauren is worried about mistakes with her health care that keep treating her with latex gloves when she's allergic to them. You know what I mean? It's like we've got mistakes all over the place. Maria is saying, my mistakes I'm afraid of, hindrances in my grades and exam. It's a lot of school-based worries. I'm just a hot mess stepping back into school field. Yes. And it, totally because, you know, it's, it's a judgment of your ability, Marie. But the thing is, isn't that why we do tests is to find out, are we good enough yet? Yet. All right. And this is how I'd like you to see it. I just am doing this to find out if I'm good enough yet to pass. And if I'm not good enough yet to pass, then I need to study more. Quite simple. And so I would like to also ask you, how many of you know that making mistakes is how you learned everything you got you this far? All right. And Nana's uh, updating us to say that she's also allergic to latex. Um, but they don't use them in Canadian hospitals anymore. That's, I didn't know that, but that's good to know. So, you know, if we're afraid of making mistakes, I'm pretty sure we're all aware of the fact that most of the things we have learned, we learned the hard way. How many of you have learned anything the hard way? You made a mistake and then you learned it. How many of you have made the mistake two or three times before you learned it? So you see, being afraid of making mistakes will keep you in terror, anxiety, and stress without any reason. Now, I think there's a difference between deciding not to go forward because of some rational reasons, um, you know, or you can say, oh, well, uh, I'm so scared of making a mistake, I don't want to go forward. I think they're two different things. Okay, so Maria is saying she learned some mistakes from how she studied after a year off from school. I fixed some of her stuff after failing the first two midterms. Exactly. That's how you learn, is by doing it the wrong way. So... So, you know... You can't bring them in where, Pat? Pat's saying you can't bring in latex altar balloons anymore. Wow. I didn't know that. You learn something every day here. So let me just check with you into hospital. Okay, so question to you all. What do you consider to be your greatest strength? You know, if, if somebody said to you, you're going on an interview, as Ali did, and Ali, you know, if is a, as an interviewer, if I asked you, what is your greatest strength, what are you going to tell me? And Kerry, what are you going to tell me? And Jody and, and Pat and Lizzie, you know, Marie, what is your greatest strength? Because I would ask you, to really be aware of what your strengths are because it helps you in these times of stress. Lizzie, what do you consider your greatest strength to be? Okay, so Kerry said her compassion. Nana says she's well-organized. 
Anybody else? Marie, oh, sorry, Ali says her need to help everyone. That's a need. That's not a strength. There's a difference, Ali. You could have a need to help everybody, but it might not be a strength. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, Marie is saying her friendliness and readiness to put a smile on your face, even when you don't want that smile. Yeah. You're a good problem solver, Lizzie. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, Jody, I would suggest that that might not be totally the truth, that you care for people quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, really. If I asked your friends, Ali, whether you need to help them, um, will they say, well, actually, she doesn't. She just does help people. I think there's a difference. One is to help people because it makes you feel better. The other is you just naturally are a helper of people. I've always said that one of the things that, that I believe the group of Dear Mama Sal people have in common is they all care. I've said it many, many times that they all, that that's what I believe the common thread is, that each of us in our own way cares deeply about people and things. And so I think anybody who has the ability to care is, is a pretty special person because you need to be able to think of more than just yourself to, to care about people. So... The question is, is it a need or is it just who you are? You know, and, and do you understand that there's a difference? Some people have a need to be out in public because they can't function unless they have that stimulation. Other people are front and center people. They don't have a need to do it. They just do it. It's their skill. And so, you know, I'm trying to make sure we've got the balance of this, that, that people understand the difference. So good stuff. All right. So then if you know what your greatest strength is, do you know what your greatest weakness is? What stops you from doing things? All right. You know you have a passion to help people. That moves you forward. What stops you? What what is what is your weakness? Because yes, Jody, you get stuck in fear. I do too. I would definitely say that fear is my weakness. All right, Nana's saying hers is anxiety. Do you understand, Nana, that anxiety is a byproduct of fear? Um, Ali's saying. People's judgment, you are fearful, there's a fear there of their judgment of you. Good stuff, Ali. Uh, Kerry says, sometimes I care too much and end up hurting myself. All right? So you fear of what, being used? What, what is the fear, Kerry? What I'm trying to find out is what blocks us. Because if we know what blocks us, then, then we can start chipping away at those walls so that we can get free and move on again. So I was thinking about the question that, that Nana asked about what am I going to do next, all right? Um, I, I'm not 100% sure, except um, Nana, when I thought about it, I thought I've learned a great deal in the last few months about what I do want and what I don't want. And I believe that my first step is to make sure I document the things that I really liked about Cedar Cottage and the things that I was prepared to let go of and the things that I really sort of went, okay, I really did like this. For example, Nana, if I can tell you that, I really realize that maybe I don't need a thousand square feet anymore or 1200 or in my case, 2400. 
you know, maybe I can survive in five or 600 square feet as long as I have an outside area that I can spend some time in and open up and get a feeling of more space. That was my number one thing that obviously I felt I could do that. And so the, the, the fear that I had, as you know, was originally, you know, would I be able to cope with that? And I think I got pretty clear on the fact that I thought I could. What I didn't want to do, Nana, just so that you understand, this was my learning and that's what I realized. I didn't think I needed to pay as much as I have been paying to heat and run a big house anymore. All right. And so those are things I'm prepared to let go of. I'm prepared to let go of the space so I don't have the expense. Does that make sense, Nana? And I think, you know, a lot of my need for space was, you know, in its day, it was very impressive. It was a you know, really pretty house and, you know, da, 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 da. And I had lots of people visiting and it was a great house for entertaining people, which I did a lot of. But, you know, I don't do that anymore. And so therefore I don't need it. So now what I've learned uh, in the last few months is that I probably can cope much better. All right. So Lizzie's saying overwhelm hits are hard sometimes. So we've been talking at lunchtime again, Lizzie, about overwhelm being the product of emotion. Um, you know, when you stack up on emotion, you get overwhelmed. Now, Kerry's having a problem with some overwhelm as well. And so I'd like to suggest that I'm pretty sure that everybody would say the same thing, the only way that you can really get out of overwhelm is to stop everything and write down what you're overwhelmed about. Okay, Ali, good to see you. Yeah, bye-bye, <laughs> honey. Thank you for popping in. All right, so the only way to get out of overwhelm is to find out what's overwhelming you. And so therefore, that's where you literally need to sit down and go, okay, who is it that I'm stressed out about? What is it that I'm stressing out about? Why? Where am I stressing out? Is it in certain locations? Uh, when am I stressing out, right? Is there, is, is there some sort of pattern to when? Um, and how am I stressing out? You know, some people stress out and not many people know about it. Other people just lose it totally uh, in public. So, you know, to me, we all have different answers to that, who, what, why, where, when, and how. So, but I really recommend that you do that, that you do actually work through what is my fear here? I know I'm overwhelming. Overwhelm means you've you got too much on your plate. Would you all agree with that? That's what causes overwhelm. I have too much on my plate. Okay, I'm going to have to turn my sound down because you guys are busy texting one another and it's coming through on mine. Hang on a second. All right, I don't think that's going to, that doesn't affect the, hi, Leanne, good to see you. We had Scott in earlier today. Um, that hasn't affected the sound of the broadcast, right? I just need to stop the notifications from dinging at me. All right, so Liz, that's that's excellent. Liz, you're saying, but your problem is when you try to communicate what it is, you get shut down. Who's shutting you down? The man in your life? Okay, so the the thing I'd like to recommend is don't then write it rather than say it. Because if you write it, you can get the whole thing finished, right? Um, whether it is whether it is makes sense to anybody else or not, right? It doesn't matter. It's like you you get to write it, and. You know, I think there's a lot to be said, um, 
Yeah, I've, I've started to do that. If I get upset with anybody. Now, here's the other thing I know for a fact, Liz, and I need you to hear me on this one. Nine out of 10 people don't really care that that's how you feel about something. It's really our stuff and it's ours to deal with. Does that make sense? All right. So the fact that you're overwhelmed is your issue. All right. It's not anybody else's issue. So Kerry was talking to us about the overwhelm she's got because she's got her mom with having problems. She's having problems. You know, she's busy with her relationship. She's got Dora and, you know, she's just adding layer upon layer. And one of the things that is really important when you're in overwhelm is you need to let some things go. Part of the reason I let the fifth wheel go was because it was causing great stress. Right. So you got um, hit with a scary possibility, right? Is it a fact or is it a possibility? And you wish that there was communication. I wish that I had Brad Pitt. Doesn't mean I'm going to get him. So that's what I call Disneyland stuff, right? You cannot make somebody who doesn't want to communicate, communicate. How many of you found that out the hard way? Yeah. So you understand, Liz, that let's just do with the overwhelm in the moment. In the moment, let's deal with overwhelm. Um, the overwhelm is that when we've got too many things on the list that we can't start, right? Everything, everything becomes stressful. I let go of Cedar Cottage because I need to concentrate on selling my house, downsizing it, you know, and I, I just had to tell the truth. I didn't get the help I thought I was going to get, you know, a, a lot of people said they were going to help and then didn't and da, 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 da. And that's okay. I'm happy. I'm okay with that. It just means it has taken me longer than I thought it was going to. And I'm doing the best I can as a, a single person with a bad back and, you know, a few issues. So I'm quite okay with it. It's just going to take me longer than I thought. I So to me, this is like, I'm not blaming anybody. It's just my reality. Yes, and when you're overwhelmed, it's like I realized I did not want to have the pressure of having to come up with selling the house by March the 31st. Because, as I've said at lunchtime, I got a call through from a realtor um, who should not have called me as far as I know. But anyway, and telling me, did I know that the average amount of time it is taking to sell a house in my area is about 76 days? Well, I did the math on that, and that's the average. So I have a feeling mine will probably take longer than average, but I could be wrong. And so to me, it was like, OK, I, I want to be able to keep my word here. And so why would I go into a deal when my house isn't even on the market yet? And it's going to be, once it goes on the market, it will, if I'm lucky, take 78 days or 76 days. Do you understand my logic? So I need to take a deep breath and go, I'm going to let people down. And that's very upsetting for me. It's not what I do. Yes, Lizzie. All right, that's really good that you gave that a bit of thought. Well done, Lizzie. Lizzie's saying, and she guess it's just her own fear and wanting somebody to say, hey, it will be okay. Who needs to say that, Lizzie? There's only one person that needs to say that. Do you understand that? For you to get out of anxiety, only one person has to say, hey, this will be okay. You've managed this many years in your life and you've had a, exactly, you've had a lot of scary things happen to you. Um, you know what I mean? It's just like you've had a lot of things happen to you and um, it's okay. But once you can see there's only one person that can actually support you to that degree and that has to be yourself because if we are constantly um, waiting for somebody else to do it 
you know, we're going to get bitterly disappointed or we're going to, you know, whatever. I, you know, one of the things I said was I got more sick than I planned at this time. Um, not that I was horribly sick, but it really drained my energy and all sorts of things. So to me, it was just like, it's okay. Yeah, it just was what it was. And my energy depleted. And so, you know, I'm not going to fight about it. It just is what it is. And it, there must be another plan. I'm not sure what it is in, in answer to Nana's question. As soon as I have my next brilliant idea, I'll let you all know. You know that. By the way, my next question to you all, how old do you feel? If you didn't know how old you are, right, how old do you feel? <laughs> Did you get my point? If you didn't know your chronological age, what would you say based on your fitness level, your this, that, the other, how old do you feel? Yes, Liz, all the medical tests scare you, and they will do that because you are busy doing the what if monster. All right? What if it's this? What if it's that? What if it's whatever? And, you know, if ever you want to really mess up your mind, keep asking, you know, dealing with the what if monster. And, you know, the way to answer that, Lizzie, from my experience is, what if it isn't? What if it isn't? Now, so, uh, Nana says she feels 40. Wow, what an incredible thing to feel at 60. Kerry's saying she feels 28, which I think is her right age. I could be wrong on that. No, she, you're a bit older than that, aren't you, Kerry? Jody's saying she feels 80 plus. Um, Marie says she feels like she's 30 emotionally. Pat says right now, you know, with her bruised ribs, you know, and everything else that's going on, and, and stitches in, what was it, five different places. She feels about 100 right now. Okay, so that's good, Kerry. So you're saying you turn 32 and you actually feel like you're 28. I would like to say that, that depending on the time of day, and when I'm trying to get out of bed in the morning, I feel my age. When I um, do other things, I don't feel my age at all. Yes, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you understand what I'm talking about here, um, Lee. It's like yeah, Lee's saying, there's part of my body that feels 30, but my body says, nope, my body feels like it's 65. Liz, I'm always speaking to you. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what I was saying. Yeah, the medical test. Uh, don't let the what if monster overplay itself, all right? Because what happens when you go for tests, especially if you know what they're checking for, you know, you're inclined to go, what, what if I've got this? What if I've got that? What if I've got one of these? What if I've got one of those? What if da 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 da? You know, Pat could say, what if I died um, under the, the knife during my operation? And she did. But guess what? They brought her back again. And now she's got a whole new lease on life because she knows there must be a reason why she's back. <laughs> I like that, Nana. Nana says she feels like <laughs> she's 60 without her clothes on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I look at it and I go, there are times in my day when I feel absolutely the, the 71 that I am. And there are other times when I feel a lot younger. And there are other times, quite honestly, where I feel a lot older. So... Yeah. But what my base is here, the reason I'm asking these questions is, if I want to feel like a 20-year-old, should I be doing things that a 20-year-old does? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? When I think about it, what sort of things was I up to as a 20-year-old? I was out every night partying most of the time. I worked a full day, and then I'd go out partying. Um, my weekends, I'd drive for four hours to go and see the love of my life who lived you know, somewhere else. You know, I think about all the things I was doing as a 20, in my 20s and 30s, and I'm going, it's no wonder I had a lot of umph and go. I was always umphing and going. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know, so there's part of me that goes, perhaps the reason we feel the, the the aches and pains that we do is because we've slowed down so much. 
Well, Nada, it's great to see you here, and I'm glad you've been enjoying the replays. Yeah, if you look at Scott, for example, you know, Scott, I'm sure, feels that much older because of his eyesight problems and his balance problems and everything else. But, you know, there's, you know, that's, that's a fear of falling, a fear of, of, you know, maybe I won't make it through today or whatever it is. And I, the person perfectly rational, understandable, but part of what I'm saying is that for some of us, the reason that we're slowing down is we're not doing enough. And I'm, I, I know that I fall into that category. What I asked at lunchtime today was, you know, how much, um, yeah, Lee, I am aware that Scott had a major heart attack. Yeah, that he suffered a major heart attack back in March, right? But he survived it. And so that is awesome. All right. So to me, this is about if we want to feel younger, maybe we need to eat some, some of the stuff that we were eating when we were younger. Maybe, we, you know what I mean? We need to be up. 20 hours out of every 24, da, 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 da. You know, if you think about it, your life was completely different. Maybe we need to, for my case, you know, maybe I need to go back to work and find, when I say back to work, I need to get my mind working fast again. Because I think my mind has slowed down. Well, maybe not that, but you know what I mean? It's sort of like, you've got to look at all the different bits. All right, here's my next question. Hi, Beth. You know, how come Beth can do all that she does? She's not a spring chicken. How come she can do all that she does in a day? Well, we know a lot of why she can is her diet. Beth, I was thinking that it would be really useful to hear what you pack for your lunch at work. I was talking to Kerry about that today, that she needs to hear from you what you pack to eat for lunch at work on the days when you do. And I was saying that I think that you've become the queen of um, meal prep. Okay, so you see, you know what to eat to give you energy. Kerry's saying, I used to be able to function on two hours of sleep, I agree, and be 100% okay. But now if I get less than five, I'm cranky. I want to tell you something. I used to be able to take the top off a JMB whiskey bottle and throw it away. And, you know, there's no way I could do that today. All right, now Nana's saying she gets 10 hours sleep a night. I'm I realized I was getting less than six, and I've really been working on improving that, and I'm now up to seven and a half. But, you know, if Nana gets 10 hours sleep a day, it's no wonder that you know, she has a different outlook on things. Makes sense. So here's my next question to you all. What are you overthinking? All right. What is it in your life? You don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but think about it. What in your life are you overthinking? All right, so Beth is saying she eats a lot of whole foods, not processed, full fat yogurt and milk and full fat cottage cheese. Yes, Liz, all right. And Liz's answer to what am I overthinking is everything. Yeah, and then she adds other things, you know, just like she hasn't got enough to, to think about, she adds other things. Yeah. So the biggest thing you can do to help yourself this week then, Lizzie, would be to say, I refuse to think about these things this week, you know, and literally cut some of them out. So... Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if you are busy trying to think on 10 things, and maybe you're, you've only got the ability to think about two or three at the moment. All right, so Jody says she's overthinking her future, which is something, as she knows, in all reality, she cannot control, all right? The, the, the way that her illness is now progressing, she cannot control that. Um, she can sort of keep tabs on it and do the best to get the best treatment she can, but it's out of her control. 
so worrying about it is um, understandable, but it's not going to make her better. Lizzie, you worrying about everything is not going to make you less stressed. It's going to make you more stressed. Does that make sense? So that is part of why I let go of, of uh, See the Cottage. There were lots of reasons why I eventually let it go. But one of them was I don't want to keep loading on the stress. I would be insane to keep loading on the stress. I'm going to let people down even more, and I'm going to run risks for myself that I don't want to run. I had planned to be, you know, done and out of here before Christmas, but it didn't happen that way. So that's okay. You know, that's the way that it is. So I need to do this one step at a time. I know that when I was talking to Benji, for example, you know, I, I said to him, you know, because what he forgot was that even if I get everything packed up, I still have to get it all downstairs. You know, I live on the first level of my house, not the ground floor level, and everything needs to go down to my garage. And I said to Benji, how do you think it's getting down there? <laughs> you know, it takes two people, right? And and he sort of looked at me absolutely stunned and obviously hadn't thought about that. I said, I can, you know, pack up all the boxes I like, but I have to keep waiting for somebody to come to help me get things downstairs. And, you know, it was just a sort of like a, I hadn't thought of that sort of moment. So I can, no, I no, Nana, I need to get it out of the top level so I can show the house. I understand the movers do it, but I need it out of the, I'm trying to get rid of everything that needs to go from upstairs so that the house is clean upstairs. Yes, I saw that, Kerry. Kerry's saying that she has taken a step back tonight and been at what she calls a smidge selfish and focusing on herself for tonight. That, that's a great step. All right, so here's my next question to you all. And smile, if you will. Of all the decades you have presently lived, which, which age group decade did you prefer? All right? What did Benji think about your fifth will? He was the one that actually first suggested that I might do that because he knows that I had always said I would like to travel, uh, you know, take a, a trailer and travel. Good night, Marie. And remember, please limit the stress. It's not going to help your grades at all. All right. It better to go for a walk than to stress. Do you understand? Better to just read and study for an hour and go for a walk for an hour than to just stress for three hours. Seriously, think about the, the logic of that. Yes, you see, Beth, you're saying that your best decade is right here and now. Isn't that wonderful? You're, you're, the, you're better than you've ever been. I think that's such a great way to think. Um, so I'm interested to hear what everybody else says. And why? All right. So Beth says right here and now because she's better than she's ever been. And is that health-wise, money-wise, emotionally, everything, right? Good for you. Marie's going to go out and enjoy herself a little tomorrow and do some window shopping and then come back and study. That's called balance. Well done. The 80s were great, yes. Um, I was, actually, Judy was asking me about, about which decade I had really enjoyed. And I said, you know, I was so lucky. I loved the 60s. I really loved the 60s, and I remember them. <laughs> um, the 70s, I loved. I, I said to her, you know, I absolutely loved the 70s, but when I see what we were wearing, my eyes roll back in my head. But I do remember loving the 70s. Um, so, you know, and I and she said to me, what do you mean about the, the fashion? And I said, well, you know, look what the men were wearing in the 70s. You know, we were wearing, you know, in, in the 60s, I remember wearing, you know, 
you know, really sort of short hot pants and things and and knee high boots and things like that. And then and then I can remember, you know, the time of stilettos. And then I can remember, you know, the platform heels and all these sort of things. And I said, you know, really, when I think about it, I've been through every fashion phase I think there is. Um, but I loved, I loved uh, the mini skirts, and I also loved the the calf length fashion that came soon after it. You know, we went from one extreme to the other. So to me, fashion wise. I, I would definitely say the 60s and 70s, not fashion-wise alone, but just how much fun did I have. I traveled so much in those decades. Um, but, you know, the other thing is, I, and like Beth, I think every decade I sort of look at it and go, wow, I learned a lot this decade. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I, I've changed a lot as well. And so I think that's quite exciting, as long as the people around you are changing with you. Because if you change a lot and the people around you don't, then it ends up being a little lonely. Okay, so here's my next question to you. What in your life have you been most passionate about? If you think back on your life, what gave you get up and go? What made you really feel like you were part of the world? And I thought about that, and I would definitely say that my major contributions would be mine. You know, I, I've given close to 30 years helping um, train young people in leadership. And that, you know, I, I, if I think about things like Dan Semba, I think you all know that, you know, I can do, be feeling all sorts of things, but I will still do everything I can to be part of, excuse me, part of Dan Semba. So that's a passion. You know, it's a passion when very little gets in the way. You know, it has to be a major thing that gets in the way. So what have you been passionate about? What, what, what has made you, you know, be glad to be alive in your life? Beth, I, I, I'm pretty sure that somewhere in your scale, it has to be your children, because I see how you talk about your children and your grandchildren. And I'm certain that a lot of the mothers and grandmothers will feel the same. But what I wondered was, over and above that obvious reality, what else are you passionate about? And how much of what you're passionate about are you doing? One of the things I realize is that I have not been um, doing as a much for uh, charitable organizations as I've done all my life. And so there's part of me that goes, why not? Well, I haven't got time. I'm doing this, that, and the other. And I'm going, you know, maybe you need to make time. You know, maybe you need to make the time. Yes, Jody. All your life, cooking has been—you've been—has been your creative passion. Yeah, and you still manage to do it, right? You might not be able to do it physically, but you organize it now. You know, you do a lot of the prep and stuff, and then Lionel helps you actually do the cooking of it. So, I, I from what I hear, uh, you're still doing what you can to be able to do that. And what I would like to suggest as well is that you sort of you know, think about Beth as well and go, how can I get passionate about creating, you know, uh, doing more meal prep um, and, and making that a reality so that I can maybe, you know, not use as much energy all week, just maybe pick one or two days a week where I, where I use that energy. Yeah, Kerry's saying music is her passion. I, quite honestly, for many years of my life, I have to admit, dance was my passion. Um, they were asking me about that, which which era of dance did I enjoy the most? And I said, without a doubt, the disco era. I loved the disco era. It was, you know, it was great music. And yeah, and Liz, that's true. 
if you think about it, Liz is saying, I think in some ways I'm just in limbo. I've lost my passion because I don't feel like I'm able to cope, uh, to focus. I think you're a hundred percent right. That's why I'm asking these questions. If you're not focusing on you, I think a lot of your focus is on other people. What if this happens? What if he thinks this? What if this person doesn't agree with this? What if, you know, and it's not about them. It's about you. Right. And Jody's saying, yeah, she's still involved and she still bakes and donates cookies to nurses in the hospital and things like that during the holidays. Yeah, actually, that was one of my questions. You know, <laughs> how many of you started your Christmas shopping um, or finished it? So the question that I'm asking you is, what is it you need to start up again, right? For some of us, we need to let some stuff go. I think for others within the group, we need to start doing something again. If we have nothing to look forward to, if we have no reason to, to wake up and do something in the morning, I was horrified to see how little painting I have done in the last three months. And, you know, now I feel guilty if I paint because I should be downsizing. One of the questions I asked at lunchtime, how much time a day are you spending looking at a computer screen? When, and then complaining you don't have enough hours in the day. And so, you know, something needs to shift. Yes, so Jody, if you love baking cookies, um, maybe it's time to start baking cookies for the season, right? Yes, Lizzie's saying it, it's all on other people, it's true, because I hate feeling that I have made people unhappy. Um, you haven't made people unhappy, you've made yourself unhappy, Liz. All right? You, you've made yourself unhappy based on your reactions of other things, to other things, right? Right, Beth, I'm not surprised to hear that you haven't played your game in over a month. Yep, doesn't surprise me at all. Molasses cookies tomorrow. I've got some molasses in my fridge. I might do the same, Jody, because they're so good, aren't they? Mind you, I haven't finished <laughs> the Halloween candy yet. Should I really be starting to bake cookies? Because you know how many I have to test first. So talking about this, how good a friend do you think you are? You know, if I, if I contacted some of your friends, um, would they tell me you're a good friend or not? And what about if I... You actually got the Halloween candy today, Lee. <laughs> Kerry says she doesn't feel like a good friend. So uh, because why? What does a good friend do that you're not doing? <laughs> you got 50% off the Halloween candy. We love that. I guess I need to stay away from the stores. <laughs> I'm just finishing mine. I've still probably got a couple of days to go, but it's, it's nearly there. All right, so you need to stay in better contact. All right, but, you know, yes, Jody says she hopes that she's a good friend. Um, she tries to be. And, you know, she loves her closest friends like family. Now, you know, quite honestly, we're, our lives, everybody's lives are getting bigger, a bit bu busier and busier, Kerry. So I think everybody feels that they need to be in contact a lot more. All right. And when did you last pick up a phone rather than just send a quick email? That's the other thing. When did you last actually speak to a friend as opposed to fire off a quick message or something? 
So think about that. Yeah, we're, we're in Canada. Walmart's more generous with us. If you live in the Catskills and it's only 50% off, you may want to cross the line here. And this was an interesting question. Whose permission do you need? Whose permission do you need to be happy? Liz, why does no one call anymore? Do you, Liz? Do you call people? That's one of the things that I am probably going to let go of is one of my telephone lines. I didn't, I fought that forever. All right, so for you, all right, you prefer talking. I actually prefer the written because I am so deaf. Do you understand that for me, being able to read it actually means I understand it. If anybody is trying to tell me something really important, I now say to them, please write it to me. Not only so I can read it in my own time and concentrate, but also so I can go back, I know where to find it. All right, so uh, for me, the written communication is actually works much better for me. And I don't have to keep saying, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't hear it. So the question that I have, how much are you emailing these days? Or has that also dropped away? Are we now not even doing emails that we're so busy with Messenger or Instagram or Whatever. Which, let me ask you that, which way of communication are you most using these days? When you get up in the morning, do you check your email first or do, what do you check first? Yeah, um, Liz is saying that she just likes seeing and hearing people, right? She's a people person. So understand there, Liz, you need to get out more, all right? You need to get out amongst people because that is where you're most comfortable, when you're seeing people one-on-one. -on -one. So locking yourself away and feeling sorry for yourself is not going to help you here. What's going to help you is getting out and maybe finding a new hobby to do or something else, all right? You go crazy alone, yeah, because you just have your thoughts and really. We, we know what they do to you. And same as mine do to me. All right. So Lee's saying, I think everything has been done through Facebook these days. Yes, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yes. So, you're, so you hate texting because you want to be able to hear the voice tone. And that's part of the communication. So good that you can see that. So, but you can you can get the voice tone and everything else it, by, you know, I noticed that um, Jody, for example, has been sending some audio messages uh, recently. Um, and it's quite, quite a shock when you suddenly get an audio message from somebody that you weren't expecting and you go, oh, <laughs> I didn't know that's what you sounded like or whatever, you know. So there are ways today that you can do that. I mean... FaceTime, why, why can we not see each other and, and talk to each other? But the point that I made to you earlier, Liz, is about when you've got something difficult to explain and you're getting cut off all the time, that's a good time to actually type that out. Yes, when did you last get a letter in the mail, not, not a bill, a letter in the mail that wasn't business-related? So things have changed. Yeah, you miss letters too, I'm sure. 
So you sent Erin a video message. Great, Kerry. Well done. Um, I found it interesting that I actually did some vlogging this weekend. I didn't pick, I didn't do a vlog on the way down. And I, but I did vlog the children because I knew you'd all want to see them. Um, and, you know, I find it so amazing that I can be in the same house as Benji and Judy and the footage I take is different. I find that really fascinating. It always used to worry me that I was taking the same footage that they took. But, you know, when I actually go to edit it, I realize that I take completely different footage. My interest in the children is very different from theirs. Do, do you know what I mean? Um, and so to me, um, it, it was interesting to actually just do a, a vlog. But here was my downside. My downside is, guess what? There's another gizmo in my computer that has had got a problem, and it's got to go in to get fixed, which I'm not going to do until Monday. But <laughs> then I realized everything that I needed to do a vlog was sitting on my heart, my external hard drive, and that's what's not working is the uh, computer's ability to read my hard drive. <laughs> you know, and it was just like, how do I do this? And I went, you are a very talented person. You are not going to let this stop you. So what I did was I downloaded a video that had the intro and the exit and I cut it and cu cut it. I cut the intro and saved it separately on my computer and I cut out the exit and I saved it separately on my computer and then made videos of those two separate things and stored them. You know, it took me like three or four hours, but you know something, that's what I had to do to do a vlog. Well, I want to tell you the best thing I did, Nana, I have to say this, is I bought the Best Buy, you know, 25 bucks a month and whatever happens to the computer, they will fix it package. Because I think I've already got my money's worth out of that. And I've still got three years to go with it, I think. So, you know, this is like either fix it or, and, and while they're fixing it, they have to give me another computer. You know, and it's, it's like it extends the warranty forever. Well, for as long as you have the package. And I like that. And so to me, that, that is the best thing I did. You know, you, it does cost you about a thousand bucks over the course of four years. But when I look at how many times you have problems with a computer, quite honestly, just to have them look at it today costs you 200 bucks. So, you know, it's worth it. So anyway, I, I will be sending it back in again. Um, and I don't think that it's the computer that is the problem. How many of you wear the letters of your, your keyboards? Um, Beth saying the last letter that she wrote was to her mum, and she wrote it for herself, sealed it up, got her frustrations up, and then told her she loved her. Yeah, good for you. Where did I get the felt? In the dollar store. Are you talking about the vlog? Okay, Carrie, no problem. You see, the thing is, um, I wouldn't even bother to keep it. You know, I'd, I'd huck that, I'd, rip, I'd shred that letter and let it go. Yeah, isn't it amazing that for for the sake of a couple of dollar store items that I happened to pick up to, you know, just add to their other presents, uh, they ended up being the things that caused the most pleasure. And the whole family enjoyed it. You know what I mean? It wasn't just the children. The adults were enjoying it as well. So yeah, I went, boy, that, that, that was a good purchase. You didn't have to spend a lot of money. You just had to get the right thing. And what I loved was that if you saw the video of the children, what I loved is everybody started with just making a bass thing 
And then that developed into a more complex thing. And then that developed into a picture thing. And it was really interesting to see as the hour, hours went on, how people, um, you know, increase their creativity to, to different lengths. And I found that really interesting. So the, the question is, whose permission do you need to be happy? What do you need to have happen so that you will be happy this week? Yeah, who needs to give you permission to be happy? Um, can I tell them apart? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, Nana. I've got to be quite honest. Um, once I've got it right and I, I can associate what they're wearing each day, I'm fine. But I, sometimes at the very beginning, I get it wrong. I think, you know, Beth, that's really important, all right? I think it's very important. Beth is saying, my thinking was that the letter with all the bad stuff, which, but it gave her comfort knowing that maybe her mom up there knows that I loved her as well, no matter what. I don't think it's silly at all. I think it's very healthy to do that. Yes, Jody, I agree with you. We need to give ourselves permission to be happy. If I don't give myself permission to go and paint, I won't paint. I will just keep feeling guilty. But the joke is I'm wasting time on my computer instead of painting. I mean, where's the sense in that? You know, I really don't think that Mahjong on the computer is making me happier than, than going and playing with throwing some paint around. So... You know, that, that is important. Nana, I really know that probably for as long as those two are on this earth, you know, I will probably get them mixed up and I won't be the only one. Yeah. And so I'm quite happy with it. But the good news is I go, I'm old. So, you know, I'm never going to get it right. And I intentionally cross, call them the wrong names now and then. All right. I, I do it intentionally because I keep going... You know, I wonder, I, I love seeing how they correct me. <laughs> it's like trying to get Juliana to smile. This has become a great, um, it's become a great game with Juliana and myself. Yeah, give us a smile, Juliana. Juliana, give us a smile. Juliana, how about a smile? And then she does the... <laughs> You know, she, she and I do it every time, so it's it's really cute. You'll be pleased to know um, that Juliana and I did sit down for a little while and do some coloring, and she, I, I thought that was so special. She actually remembered. She said that. She said, Mama Sal, you always color with me. And I go, yep, I do. And I really... Um, I, I really had fun um, reading bedtime stories to them this time. Even though they told me I, I read too many. I said, I don't care. I'm your grandmom. Yeah, I'm special. I, I, I can yeah, read more than one. It's part of why I come down. I have a bit of catching up to do. Yeah, you called your dog Lucas, right? Lucas being her grandson. I think that's so cute. Yes, I, you know something, but you know what I find so interesting, Beth, when I color with Juliana is I take instructions from her. All right. I actually take instruction from her. I let her bring what it is she wants to color. And I say, what do you want me to color? And she'll show me. And I go, which color do you want in there? And she'll tell me. And then I will color it. I don't actually do my own stuff. What I'm doing is letting her lead me. And I've always done that with her for some reason. I've also said to Auntie Mel that uh, next time I come down, I'm probably going to teach them the Donna Jubilee way of painting because I think that surely um, Juliana's old enough to be able to start experimenting with that. Um, and then, you know, what I'd also like to do, obviously, is, is to teach them about the flow painting that I do, you know, the pore painting. 
but that's such a mess. So I may need to find the right place to do that one in. <laughs> Probably won't be in Benji and Judy's house, for example. Yes, Beth, you like to sketch some more. And that's something I had to encourage uh, Jody to get back to doing. Right? Um, so my next question to you all, what is your purpose in life these days? You know, I, I know some of you, it was being a mother or a grandmother or whatever. Um, I know they love messy stuff. That's why I want to show them how to do it. But I've got to find a safe place to do it. Yes, art is so peaceful. So what is your purpose in life these days? Does anybody know what their purpose is? And the reason I say that is I was amazed how many times when I was working, I said, you know, when I retire, I'm going to spend my time doing this, 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 and this. <laughs> and I haven't. Um, yes, Nana, right? You're not sure. You're starting a new journey. And I think some of us need to wake up every morning and ask that question. What is my purpose today? Yeah. Why did I need to wake up today to do what? And it sure as heck wasn't to lie around playing video games. So what is it that I was meant to do in my life today? Now, Beth doesn't have time to ask that question. But maybe her purpose is to actually relax. And thank you for spending the time here with us, Beth. Are you multitasking? I always meant to ask you that. When you, when you join in on the broadcast, do you multitask? <laughs> Jody. Jody says her main purpose in life is to hold down her recliner. <laughs> Stop it from flying in the air. I think that's beautiful. And, you know, we were hearing Lauren was off to see the sound of music. Am I correct on that one, Jody? So we know that we're all going to be singing those songs for quite a few days to come. And, you know, I, I had these questions because I realized that I have got into some sort of rut routine thing because of this trying to downsize and sell. And I'm really not having a lot of fun about anything. But I did enjoy my trip, however short it was. You know, I managed to get down there and back again in less than 24 hours. Um, but I really enjoyed that, you know, and I really enjoyed um, catching up on news and seeing everybody and, you know, those sort of things. And so, again, I say, when did you last get out of the house and go visit somebody? You know, those sort of things. That's interesting. Nana's saying, well, she always has something to do, and often she helps her neighbor. I often think the peaceful times are to rest till the next person needs me. Yeah. And that next person could be Rick or or anybody. Yes. So, so Beth is saying her purpose used to be to stay low and not to be noticed, but now it's to show who I really am so I can grow and finally be able to prove to myself that I'm a beautiful person inside and out. Yay, Beth. We like that. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, you look at it and you go, if you don't have a purpose, and, and Jody, I've got a feeling that a lot of what's happening to you because of your ill health is you are not seeing your purpose anymore. You, you, you know, as you said, the, 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 the vision that you see for the future is, is not that bright and cheery so but the the thing is 
something tells me you still have this incredible purpose in life. And you will continue to do that until you can't. And, you know, to me, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you all know that, you know, I'm like that as well, that I know that part of my purpose is to be here. And, you know, sometimes I think, you know, I don't know why I bother and other times I know why I do. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's a wonderfully rewarding thing to be able to do. Yes, Beth, and I think that's really important that you can see that. It's infectious, right? You can see that people really enjoy being around you when you're in your element. Yes, Jody, I believe that you'll find it again as well. And you know something? I already think that you're, you know, over that little valley and, you know, you're, you're starting to perk up again. And, you know, part of it is, hey, look at how you've educated me on stuff. Um, you know, you are great at, at sharing knowledge. So I'm very, very grateful for that. So the other question that I had was, if, if your goals all came true, what would your life look like then? You know, I'm thinking about you know, this whole thing about downsizing, selling my house. And, you know, I said a couple of times, maybe I'm not meant to, uh, you know, just go and get somewhere. Maybe I'm meant to get on a boat and go around the world for a year. You know, and maybe, maybe I just haven't seen exactly what it is I meant to do yet. Yes, Beth, I think it's really important to know that that part, there's that part of you that's an entertainer. All right. And that you have the ability to make people smile. Now, I'm certain, you know, that not everybody you want to do that with, but, you know, you do have the ability to make people's lives better. So Nan is saying in her perfect world, everybody, the whole family would be close to her in her town. <laughs> Not that she would go and be closer to them in their town, but they all need to come and be close to her in her town. That's pretty honest. I like that. <laughs> yeah, you can see me living on a cruise ship for a year. Can you imagine how much trouble I'd get into? Yes, you see, Beth, and that's the whole thing. You make somebody smile. You you don't know how many times that gets paid forward, right? And they, just by the fact that they're feeling better, they make somebody else's day better. And and you know that's an important thing. Yes, I believe you would, Nana. I believe that you know you you definitely would. And I don't think you're alone. I think that most grandparents would say the same thing. Um, I have some friends of mine who spend six months of the year here in British Columbia and spend six months of it in New Zealand. And actually, that's not true. They spend some time in British Columbia, sometimes in New Zealand, where part of their family is now. And then in between those two places, they visit the other family members. Does that make sense? So coming back from New Zealand, they stop in at Hong Kong or wherever to go see the family, their, their children that have moved there or whatever for a month or so. And then when they leave BC and travel back to New Zealand, they pop into Vegas or wherever it is that other family members now live. And, you know, they said it's a full year um, um, journey that they do just visiting their children. Yeah, I, I heard you say that you nicked yourself with the dreaded box cutter again, Beth. Be careful of that thing. It's dangerous, apparently. Yes, that's right, um, Jody. 
Yeah, let me dream living in a totally accessible home, handicap accessible, and being involved in running our home with a part-time job as a greeting card designer. Yes. And did you forget having somebody other than Lionel who can look after your needs so that Lionel, you know, can have a bit more time? You know, I'm pretty sure that you'd also add that in there. Well, <laughs> do you know why your family's moved away, Nana? <laughs> yeah, Beth had cut herself again with the box cutter. I can just see her doing it too. Um, I don't think that her hands allow her to do as much as she used to. No, no. So it's not just as simple as that. Yeah, they moved away because they wanted to, right? They had other things that they wanted to do. So it's as sad as that is. And yeah, but you can dream, you know, that. Um, but, you know, uh, how often do you go and visit them? That would be my question. So to me, this is like, um, it's a two-way highway, right? The road goes both ways. That's what they have hotels for, Nana. Or, you know, rent an RV. All right? So that's what other people do. Not everybody can stay with their family, and thank goodness for that. Yes, of course it's easier to bring them all to your place. No, none of us is rich. None of us is rich. But, you know, if you made the effort to go and maybe spend two nights, you know, at a cheap motel just so that you could be there, it would show your willingness That, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's why I was trying to explain to Nana that, you know, it's not just a case of painting. It's a case of are you still able to paint the way you'd like to? Yeah, and so th this is I what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, if we honestly wanted to make a difference in people's lives, maybe we have to think a little less about ourselves and a little more about them, you know, which is, you know, for every time they come and visit you, do you then do the opposite? Because they have expenses and everything else when they come and visit you. Um, so, you know, Nana, all I'm trying to say is, you know, if you can try and think, Think through that. Yeah, and Nana, I was thinking there's so many people who paint with their toes these days, right, and, and other strange ways just because they can't use their hands anymore. And I know, Jody, that your legs are also a problem, but there are also people that paint with, you know, paintbrush in their mouth. So, yeah, and I've got it too. <laughs> so I totally understand all those reasons, yeah. So good stuff, people. The, so the reason I wanted to ask all these questions is because if you keep asking them of yourself, you know, what's my purpose today? Why did I bother to wake up? Uh, if I had a really good day today, what would it look like when it's finished? You know, and, and sort of ask yourself that. And wh why do I want, you know, why do I want all the family to come and visit me? Because it's easier. Oh, that's an interesting point. You know, ask yourself those questions. Um, and what do I need to do? Right? What do I need to do to to show my willingness to to contribute? 
And so I look at it and we've all got a thousand and one excuses where we can't do stuff. And and that is my my truth of it as well. You know, that I have let this whole moving, downsizing, everything else. And I'm really proud of what I've done, quite honestly, because it hasn't been easy. Um, I assure you, getting things downstairs one step at a time, walking backwards down a staircase and quietly rolling something down a staircase is scary. But you know something? I've done it, and I've managed to get almost everything I need down into the garage now. I've got a couple of things that I still am going to need um, Dougie or some other man to take for me. But other than that, I am, I have done the bulk of it. So it's, you know, I just need to now tidy up the last of it. I'm even halfway through the craft room now. And my goal tomorrow is to actually knuckle down and do, you know, some serious work on the desk. I will probably do a before and after picture so that you can see, because I found that I'm now at the stage where everything goes in to that room and onto that desk and that desk has got to be cleaned up now. It's time. Now, Beth, is Beth still here? I, I wanted to say that, that I discovered something this week that interested me. Well done, Beth. You don't have to sleep on the couch. He should sleep on the couch when he snores, right? <laughs> but what you did is you changed your behavior, all right? You changed your behavior, and now that uh, then now he's prepared to do something. Well done, Beth. You didn't stay victim. You actually did something. Very proud of you. And by the way, if he does end up with a sleep apnea machine, uh, I'll let you know where to get one of these things. <laughs> um, so, yeah, because complaining about it didn't fix it, all right? Sometimes you just have to show that you're serious. Yeah, well done. I think one of the biggest problems um, that I found is that nagging just doesn't work. All right? Yeah, I know you need your sleep now, right? But really, nagging just doesn't work. You know, it just is not right. So if this is called, hey, uh, I'd much rather sleep with you, but I can't get any sleep when I'm sleeping next to you, so I need to go and sleep on the couch because I do need to get some sleep. I've got children to look after and a job to do, and I love you dearly, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I need my Z's to be this beautiful and active. Um, so I think that I'm very proud of you. Uh, I really am. And, you know, sometimes you've just got to call it for what it is. And it's uncomfortable and it's not easy for people to take. But it is what it is. And so I, I really admire you for that. <laughs> I, I I I want to tell you just watching what you're up to this year, Beth, just makes me smile. Because it really is an interesting journey that you're taking and that you really it's like watching your wings develop, you know, when you're beginning to fly. And it's it's beautiful. I'm really proud. And it's it's not about that any of us is perfect, Beth. It's just lovely to see you taking the steps that you need to take. And as you will see, you know, during the weeks, everybody has their little moment where they go downhill a bit and then with a bit of help, they go uphill a bit and then, you know, they go downhill a bit. You know what I mean? And it's just like we're all on that journey and that's what life is about. So good for you. Jody. keep doing the work you know you need to do. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I think for some reason, Jody, your job is to learn to just live life as, as easily as you can each day. 
and to do the things that you enjoy, you still enjoy while you can. And I think that's the question I'd be asking myself, Jody, if I were in your shoes, which is what do I need to do now while I still can? All right. What what do can I still sketch a little? Then let me do it because I don't know if this time next year I'll still be able to sketch. Um, you know, can I still paint a little? If so, let me do it. You know, can I still knit a little or crochet or whatever it is that you used to do? If so, let me do it before I find out I can't do it anymore. And part of what I said when I was down with the children was the next time I go down, I probably will take my printer and my um, uh, die cutting machine with me and have some fun creating some fun things for the kids uh, with my machine because that's what I always wanted to do or or you know we'll make cards together or you know we'll do those sort of things um so that you know because they so enjoy doing crafts it's amazing and I love it I really love watching them do it I love seeing their creativity and I love seeing how they, um, you know, how different their personalities are. So, and, you know, I said to Auntie Mel while I was down there, you know, Auntie Mel, because Auntie Mel is very creative. I said, we may need to get out of this house and go and do some of this stuff somewhere else. And she said, I know what you mean. <laughs> and I went, okay, fine. Find me somewhere where you can make a big mess. <laughs> You know, maybe I need to go to the Y and ask um, uh, JJ at the Y, you know, please, can you give me the art room so I can make a total mess, you know, for an afternoon um, so I can teach them how to do the painting. I, You know, I'd love to be able to do that. So it's I just have to find the way to do it. And it's something I can bring into their lives. Yes, I agree with you, Beth. You know, it was the same thing. I don't know if you saw in Judy's video where Daddy was wondering what to be and Mia looked at him and said, God, why don't you go as God? Isn't it amazing that she said that? And then Judy immediately said, we don't mess with it. <laughs> you know, which is, I understood the, the reasoning. You know, we don't, we don't dress people up as God. But it was interesting that that is what she suggested. And I thought, isn't that amazing that she sees him that way? I think the thing that really stunned me more than anything was to actually be there while they said their prayers, all three of them together. And that I realized for the first time at a very deep level that they actually had helped me in their prayers every night. I didn't know that. You know, you could tell by the way they were doing the prayers. This wasn't a new part of their prayer. It was, and da 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 da, and da 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 da, and and Mama Sal da 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 da, and so and so, and then so and so. And I just, you know, I want to tell you something. I just sat there with the tears rolling out of my eyes. It was just so amazing to hear. And I, I said to Judy, "Thank you. It's so good to know somebody's got me in their prayers, other than Jody, of course." Um. You know something, and, you know, she has every reason to think the world of him. He is her daddy, and he does a good job of it. And he is incredibly patient with them. You know, that that's what I always am amazed with. Uh, and Judy is just superwoman. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I really don't know how she does what she does. It's just totally floors me. And I'd like to say she does what she does because she wants to. You know, Mia lost her Moana uh, necklace. We found it later, but she lost it. Judy, without batting an eyelid, got in the car, went and got another one, came back. You know, she was doing Halloween party at the school. She came back. She was doing editing. She came back. She was doing the girl's hair. She did more editing. You know something? She just kept on going like the Energizer Bunny, and I'm going, I don't know. How. And she was talking to me. Yes, and Beth is saying that I love it when Lucas does pictures for you at school. Yeah, and, you know, it's really important, right? Um, I loved it. I love it when the girls come to me 
Uh, for example, Mia came to me with a cookbook and said, can we, can, can, can we do this now? And I was just about to go and I said, I'm so sorry, honey, I have to go back to Canada. But next time I come down, you know, why don't we see if we can plan that? You know, and I felt so badly for her because, it, you know, she'd gone to get the cookbook all the way upstairs in the library and come down with it. And, you know, she was busy going through it. And so, you know, I must make sure that the next time I go down there that I, I really try and make some time to cook something with her. Although, you know, I'd be scared to use Benji's thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for fear of doing something wrong, if any of you relate to that. Anyway, so I'm hoping that this has helped some of you ask yourself some questions um, and, and sort of go, whatever happened yesterday was yesterday. Today is another day. Let's start again. And let's, you know, when we wake up tomorrow, let's say, okay, what's my purpose today? You know, if this is my last day, what do I want to do? Uh, they will be building a new house. I think they've got to find the right piece of ground for it first, Beth. I did ask what things he would do differently because, you know, they built the one they're in now. Um, and, he, you know, they did, Benji did an awesome job in building the, the, the one that they're in now. But I did say to him, what would you change? And it was interesting, you know, that, that the, some of the things that he would add uh, into a new house. Um, you know, because obviously he's, you know, given it a lot of thought. But th they are literally trying to find the right piece of ground on which to do it. And, you know, then, then they will do that. As far as I know, they haven't found that yet. But, yeah, I could be wrong. So, everybody, I hope you have a super Saturday, wherever you are, and I hope it makes some sense that there are days where we need to just sit down and ask ourselves some questions. I keep saying there are days that you just need to slow down and, you know, write or, and, and ask yourself these questions as you write, you know, who, what, why, where, when, and how. And when I needed to make that major decision, um, this week, I could have spent a lot of time going, oh, how many people have I let down? Uh, how many people, you know, have I upset? Da, 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 da. And I went, you know, I'm really sorry. It was never my intent to do any of that. My reality has changed. My reality in the last few months has changed because I wasn't able to do as much as I thought I could. And that's okay. It's just my reality. And I can't, I will not say that I should have done more and I should have done this and I should have done that because, no, I didn't. And therefore, that's a waste of time and effort. I am not going to get emotionally attached to it all. It is time for it to go. And if it's still there when I've sold the house, then maybe I'll rethink it. I tell Scott I'm delighted to hear that he's emailing and I will look forward to the email. So, everybody, take it easy on yourself. Do the best you can to make yourself happy. And do the best you can to let go a lot of that emotion that is just ruining your life at the moment and work more about just making life a bit happier for yourself. And that's don't overthink things. It just is what it is. Who cares why? You know, you're not going to change what happened yesterday by stressing out. You're not going to change the marks for for your exam tomorrow by stressing out. You'd be far better to go and have a really fun day and relax. Yes, Beth says, remember to make somebody smile every day and enjoy every second. Make a, dif making, make a difference in somebody else's life because that's what life is. Just for some of us, Beth, I agree. Not everybody. You know, I've met an awful lot of people where that isn't what they think. I... I must admit, for me, I always ask myself, did, did I make somebody smile today? Did I make a difference in somebody's life today? And if I did, it's a good day. And then I also have to say, and did I make a difference in my own life today through something that I did? All right? Because that's equally important. And who do I need to stop blaming today for the things that I want to do that they're not getting done? You know, and it's it's like, you know, I keep, asking myself to just grow up, you know, and deal with reality, not, not all the stuff that goes around it. And if we can just deal with reality, as Jody will tell you, 
you know, life is not easy for her right now, but if she keeps dealing with every day's reality and does the best she can, she will be as happy as she can be. Um, you know, it, Lauren wasn't happy that her trip to um, Melbourne got had to be cancelled, but she didn't have the money, so she needed to cancel it. I wasn't happy that I needed to get rid of uh, Cedar Cottage, but I also knew that if, you know, if I would find somewhere else. And the other thing that I know is I will make wherever I live home. So, Beth, I'm delighted I make you smile. <laughs> that makes me very happy. Um, I'm delighted that we all make a difference. And I say that because, you know, whenever I get a letter from anybody that says, thank you, thank you, you made such a difference, I try and make sure everybody knows that it isn't just me. It is us as a group, right? It's the fact that we talk about these things that help so many people. And so it's people like Ali popping in and Nana coming in and, you know, you might not be there for every broadcast or Lee and Scott now, you know, throwing in his two cents worth. So you look at it all and you go, you know, it all adds to the joy of what we bring, hopefully, to people. And the other thing is, you know, we're not any of us very perfect people. We're just human beings. And I think that quite often we spend our life being human doing rather than human being. And so to me, it's about do the best you can. We've each traveling our own journey and it's equally difficult. Uh, we each have our own illness and it's equally difficult. We each have our own struggles and it's equally difficult in my view. And so you look at it and go, let's be gentle with each other and understand that we're all here to help one another. And that's why we started this. And for that, I really thank you. It was a big hug to you all. And a reminder yet again, please look after one another and continue to do that. But most of all, um, please, please, please remember to look after yourself. Beth, stay away from sharp objects. Or if you have to have them in your hand, could you please focus on the sharp object, not everything else around you? <laughs> I would be most appreciative of it because, <laughs> you know, that blood makes such a mess on those packages. And, you know, and you've got to clean the shelves up afterwards and all the rest of it. You know, it's just a real mess. <laughs> this is dear mama's whole thing. Thank you so much for being in my life. I genuinely appreciate it. And I'll see you on Sunday. This is dear mama's whole thing. Bye-bye <laughs> for now.